Okay, lesson 7.3 is going to go through trig ratios and inverse trig ratios. After this, you'll see there's an additional video about using your calculators. If you're at all concerned about using your calculator or have any questions after I go through things, go ahead and watch that. I'm going to do kind of a quick tutorial about the different calculators. So SOHCAHTOA is a term I believe you guys saw in Math 1. And this is kind of a shortcut for talking about sine equaling opposite over hypotenuse, cosine equaling adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent equaling opposite over adjacent. But what exactly does that mean? That is talking about the ratio keyword of side lengths based on an angle. And they're going to change based on what angle you're talking about. If I'm talking about B, for example, the sine of angle B is the opposite over the hypotenuse. It's B over C. And that is the ratio, that fraction. That's what we're after. The cosine of B is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, A over C, and the tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent, which is B over C. If you switch locations and you talk about A, then when you talk about the sine of A, you're talking about the opposite of A over the hypotenuse, which is A over C. The cosine of A, which is the adjacent side to A over the hypotenuse, is B over C. And the tangent of A is the opposite side over the adjacent, which is A over B. If you notice, there are some similarities here. But the key with trig ratios is that you make your landmark. They're all relative to different angles. So when we talk about an example like find the sine, cosine, and tangent of x, well, where is x? x is right here. That changes everything. So the sine of x is the opposite over the hypotenuse. It's 5 over 13. Whatever angle x is, x is a degree measure, whatever that is, the side lengths have the ratio of 5 over 13. The cosine of x is the adjacent side to x over that hypotenuse, which is 12 over 13. And the tangent of x is the opposite side again over the adjacent, 5 over 12. So when I ask you to find the ratio or to find sine x, cosine x, and tangent x, we are after these fractions that represent the relationships of the sides. Now we are going to skip examples 2, 3, and 4 right now, and we'll come back to them in a minute. I want to talk about the trig ratios and special right triangles right now. Now, what kind of triangle is HKJ? Well, in looking at it, you can quickly see 5 and 5. This means this is isosceles, which means this has to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means in theory, we could go back to our special rules from yesterday's lesson. Now, there are different ways to do this. Our 45, 45, 90 rules would help us out in finding the lengths of the sides, but that's not what trig ratios are. Trig ratios are asking me how two sides compare. Okay, so I want you to be clear what these do. The 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90 rules help you find side lengths. Trigonometry talks about the ratio, the comparison between two sides. So the tangent of J, where is J? J is here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And the tangent of J would be equal to 5 over 5, which is 1. So that's how you work the different tangent ratios. 
Now, the sine of C down here, where is C? C is right here. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of C is equal to 12 over 24, which is equal to 1 half. And we always represent trig ratios in the lowest forms of fractions. Now, what happens is that our 45, 45, 90 and our 30, 60, 90 triangles have special relationships. When you take Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc, you have to memorize this. And in fact, I think they give you timed tests on it. Right now, you can use the table. The square root of 2 in the 45, 45, 90 should look familiar because that is, remember, leg and hypotenuse. That is our rule. In the 30, 60, 90, 2 was how our hypotenuse was related to our short side. And square root of 3, it was how our long leg was related. So these should look familiar to you. If you took these particular triangles and you went through and did sine, cosine, and tangent for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, you would get this table. The sine of 30 is 1 half. The cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. And the tangent of 30 is the square root of 3 over 3. The sine of 45 this is wrong, should be the square root of 2 over 2. I didn't rationalize my denominator. The cosine is the square root of 2 over 2. That should feel good to you because we know that two sides are the same for trig ratios. And the tangent is 1, which should also feel OK because opposite over adjacent, the legs are the same. The tangent's going to be 1. The sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 is 1 half, and the tangent of 60 is the square root of 3. And those will always be true. Now that we have this table, let's go back to those examples, and you'll see how this table provides a shortcut to those examples. Now, in number two, if we're going to find the missing side, this happens to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And if you notice, all of a sudden it's different. I don't have the two sides. But what I can do if I want to find, let's call this side over here would be little y. And this would be little x. Remember, sides are the lowercase opposite the uppercase vertex. We talked about that before. So I'm going to set this up, what this side is over here. I'm going to talk about opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to talk about the sine of 45 is equal to what I don't know why over 2, which is the hypotenuse. Now, you could use your calculator and find sine of 45. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But if you flip to that table, the table says the sine of 45 for the table, the sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. So I can substitute this for right here. So I can say the sine of 45 is the same as the square root of 2 over 2, which would be equal to y over 2. This is a cross multiplication problem. And I have 2y is equal to 2 square roots of 2, subtract 2 from both sides, or divide by 2, excuse me, and y is the square root of 2. Once I know y, I obviously know x because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and the legs are the same. So this is where the trig problems start to get more interesting. Not only can we find ratios of lengths, like we did in number one, we can start throwing the angles in. That makes this a number, and I can solve for a variable. And my solving rules work exactly the same with everything else. Treat this like a number, even though there's a word in front. This is a decimal value or a fractional value which I happen to know from my table, substitute it in, and solve. So let's look at example three. Based on what I know, 
find the missing side? Well, there's multiple ways to do this problem as there are a lot of trig problems. Let's work from this angle. Well, if I want to know this side over here, that would be the opposite side, and I'm given the hypotenuse, so I'm talking about the sine of 30 is equal to, this is little k, is equal to little k over 12, opposite over adjacent. Well, go to your table. What is the sine of 30? Well, according to the table, the sine of 30 is 1 half equals k over 12, cross multiply, end up with 2k equals 12, and end up with k equals 6. That should feel good in your gut because the short side should be half the hypotenuse from our 30, 60, 90 rules. If I stay with 30 and I try to find little j, now I'm talking about the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So I'm talking about the cosine of 30 being equal to little j over 12. Go to your table. What is the cosine of 30? According to the table, the cosine of 30 is th square root of 3 over 2. That equals j over 12. Remember, you're just doing a substitution. Cross multiply. 12 square roots of 3 equals 2j. Divide both sides by 2. And I have 6 square roots of 3 equals j. Again, that should feel comfortable with that square root of 3 in there because that's what our 30, 60, 90 rules would tell you. Now, some of you are wondering why do it this way instead of using 30, 60, 90 rules. It doesn't matter. You can use the 30, 60, 90 rules, except I'm going to show you an additional example where you can't. But let's look at one more where we can use our table. I know this angle. This would happen to be the opposite side and this is the adjacent. So based on what I know, little a would be the tangent of 60 equal to opposite over adjacent. Go to the table. What is the tangent of 60? Well, it's the square root of 3. Well, I'm going to put that over 1. It's a whole number so that my cross multiplication works better. Cross multiply. And I end up with 7 square roots of 3 equals a. Now, if I need to find b, how is that related? Well, that's the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So I'm talking about the cosine of 60 being 7 over b. Go to your table. What's the cosine of 60? The cosine of 60 is 1 half on the table. That equals 7 over b. When you cross multiply, you end up that b is equal to 14. Now, let's look at an extra example because I would probably use 30, 60, 90 rules to complete these. It's really the same thing. But let's look at an example where you can't. So let's add this example. And this is one where you're going to need your calculator. So let's call this A, let's call this 15, B, C, that makes this little b, makes this little a, and let's make this angle 37. If I want to solve for my other angles, starting with 37, that would be the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I'm talking about the sine of 37 is equal to b over 15. Now I don't have a table for the sine of 37. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for b. B is being divided by 15, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 15. Basic algebra. Notice I put the 15 out front, so I have 15 sine 37 equals B. Now, I'm going to go to my calculator, and you need to be sure about a couple of things. You need to be sure that your calculator is in degrees. So the TI-30s, TI-31s, it should say DEG on them. The bigger ones, I will show you how to do them in degrees in the video. Well, I'll do it real quick here. Um, hit mode. Make sure right here it says degree. Okay. Once it does, 
I'm going to say enter. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to type in, and here's how I like to do these, and I like to do these in pieces. I'm going to do 30, whoops, clear, sign 37, and then I'm going to hit enter, times 15, and I'm going to hit enter. So B is 9.0. 0.03. In the other calculators, you have to enter the angle and then the sign. So what is A going to be? Well, that is the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So we are going to be talking about the cosine of 37 being equal to A over 15. We multiply both sides by 15. Go to your calculator. In these, you type cosine 37. I like to hit enter times 15. Enter. And A is 11.98. Now, be very careful about how you enter things. And I will talk more about that in the calculator video and in part.